Today's lesson is going to be on how to cut a tenon on the aprons on the side of this table. So this, this little table that we're making, it's going to have three aprons, one on the side, one on the back, one on the other side. And there's a fourth one that we're going to actually cut a fourth apron, which is actually going to be the front of the table. There's a rail above and below the drawer, and the drawer face is all going to come out of one tenon. We're going to cut it apart and make those three parts out of it. So we'll be actually making four tenons. The front one will be a little different. We'll talk about that when we do it. But basically, the joint that we're making is the mortise and tenon joint. So you have the, the mortise on the legs and the tenon that fits into it. We've already talked about how to make the mortise, so now we're going to do the tenon. It's always easier to make the mortise first, the tenon second, because it's easier to adjust the thickness of the tenon than it is to adjust the width of the mortise. So I make this first, then we're making this. So we're gonna, today we're going to talk about cutting the tenon. So we're going to do this on the table saw. There's lots of ways to do this. The way we're going to do it is using the dado blade on the table saw. So the first step is to set up the dado blade. Now we've got a set of plans. And the, if we look at the plans, we can see that the, the tenon is 3 quarters of an inch long. And it's going to cut in about 3 sixteenths shoulders on top and bottom. We can see over here in the detail. So that the first step is to set up the dado blade to cut this tenon that's 3 quarters of an inch long. So that's the first step. So what we're going to do, we're going to unplug the table saw. You just want to unplug the saw when you get your hands down in there. And then we're going to reach over here and grab the wrenches. And I like to raise the blade all the way up when I change it, it's just a lot easier. We talked about how to change a blade before, but I'm going to take this guy out. Being careful to not drop the nut down the hole. Take out the washer. And then take out the blade. Be careful to not bang the blade again on the opening of the table. Put that in a safe spot. And then when you use a dado blade, you do not use a riving knife or guard. So we're going to take that out and put that off to the side. And then we're going to be using the dado set. We have that over here in our box. And the dado set has its own cartridge. Again, we're using a saw stop table saw, so they have the brake cartridges. So we have to switch out to the wider cartridge. So um, if you have a regular table saw, this step you don't obviously have to do. But that's what we have here. So. I'm going to switch this out. There we go. Put this one over here. I like to put the cartridge I'm not using back on the dado box just so we don't lose track of it. Plug this back in here. It's a lot easier to change the cartridge when there's no blade in here. So remember to do this when the blade is out. You can do it with it in, but you end up scraping your arm all up. So this is much easier. Okay, so now let's take a look at the dado set for a second. Let me bring the box over here. A dado set, this is called a stacking dado set, there's all different kinds, but the most common is a stacking dado where you have, it's basically a blade sandwich. You have two blades and in between you have chippers or spacers that control how far apart these are and it makes a wider cut. Um, there's also a wobble type um, dado set that you could buy where it's got a hub in the middle and when you change the hub it just changes how much the blade wobbles as it goes around. The disadvantage to that is it tends to cut an arc because the blade's wobbling. And that does not give you a nice flat surface for a tenon. So a stacking dado set is a little bit more of a hassle to get set up. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Um, but it gives you a flatter cut, especially if it's a good quality set. So now you gotta put the blades in so that the teeth point towards you. And you'll notice that the, the dado blade has a raised hub on one side, but not on the other. And on the other side, it says this side out. So you got to kind of figure out, well, if the, that side's out and that side's out, I got to put this blade on first, because if I put this blade on first, the teeth point the wrong way. So I got to kind of think about that for a second, use my head. So put this on first so that the correct side is facing out. I'm going to slide that in. And then my dado set, each blade is an eighth, I need three quarters, so I got to do a little math. How many eighths are there in three quarters? Well, there's six eighths. So I've got two eighths, each with the two blades, and I got to add four more. Well, there's a thick chipper in my set that's 
a quarter, which is two eighths. So I've got two, two more is four. And I'm gonna put that on. It's got a tooth on it, just like the saw blade does, and that tooth has to face towards you. And then I have two more eighth inch chippers. So that's my other two eighths that I need. That'll give me six eighths or three quarters of an inch. Most dado sets are 13 sixteenths max. So just, you'll know that you have a 16th inch chipper that's left, um, which makes sense. When you put the chippers on, stagger them so they're not all next to each other. You, don't, you do not want to put them like that because the teeth on the chippers are wider and you, they, they need to miss each other. So you got to stagger them a little bit so that everything lays flat. Then put the last blade on. Now because of all the thickness, in this case you do not use the washer. So put the washer in the case so you don't lose it. And then carefully put the nut back on. By the way, the dado set is sharpened so that the, the outer blades, the, the high point of the tooth is to the outside so it makes nice clean corners. If you get the blades backwards, aside from the hubs not being in the right spot, those, um, the, the groove doesn't come out nice and clean like it's supposed to. Again, snug it up, uh, but you don't have to kill it to get it super tight, but it will tighten as it runs. And we'll take this out of the way. And then we need to switch out the throat plate because the blade's fatter. Obviously, this throat plate's not going to fit in there, so we're going to go to the wider throat plate for the dado set. I'm going to close the clamp that holds the um, throat plate, the um, riving knife in, even though we're not using it. And you got to lower the blade a little bit for this all to fit. So that's how you get the, the correct blade on there. So I should have a blade thickness now that is three quarters of an inch thick. If I measure it one side to the other, I've got, and you gotta look at the teeth, three quarters of an inch thick blade. So it'll make that cut in one pass. Now, to do this, the way it's gonna get cut is, we're gonna be, it's, it's a cross cut operation, so we're gonna be using our miter gauge. And I'm gonna be basically going through here and making one pass, okay? I'm gonna use the fence in this situation as my stop. Now, by the way, the, the tenons on this have a 45 degree angle cut on them because if you take a look at the legs, you have two different tenons coming in and if they were cut square, they would bump in, into each other. So they do get 45 cuts. We're not gonna do that right now. We'll do that in another video. We're gonna cut these square right now, um, which is a very common joint. But I'm gonna have this right up against here and I'm gonna have this right up against the blade and this against here. And if I run it this way, this saw blade is gonna scratch up my expensive fence. So what we do is we put a auxiliary fence on there. It's just a piece of plywood that we've got that we're gonna put against here. Um, some people call it a slave or sacrificial fence. So this will get cut up and not my expensive fence and I can just throw another piece of plywood in here. One thing you gotta watch is the plywood is never perfectly flat. And if you look right down it, it does have a slight curve to it. And if you put the curve so that the, the middle of the curve is against the fence and it sticks out a little on either end, when you clamp it in, it'll flatten. If I put it the other way, you can see that there's still a little space here and it's a little spongy. So that's not a real good way to do it. So flip it over so that when you clamp the two ends, and I'm just gonna take a simple clamp on either end and, and pull it all together. And you can see that that'll hold the middle end and it'll be nice and accurate. And I have the clamps way at the ends, so they're out of the way. So now everything is nice and tight. Now I can put this nice and close to the blade. Pull this over. And I'm walking the blade up until I get, to, get it to where I want. Now some people will put an extra sixteenth on the, the blade and let the blade cut slightly into the fence. Um, and that's another way to do it, and that's perfectly fine but you, you'll make a 16th inch deep groove in your fence all the time. And again, and it's a sacrificial fence, so it doesn't really matter too much. I like to do it this way, um, just because I'll be forever making extra fences, but um, that's, that's an acceptable method as well. So that gets my distance correct and I can double check it. And again, remember the saw is unplugged for all this setup stuff. So I've got three quarters of an inch to the outside of the, from the fence to the outside of the dado blade. 
Then the next step is to get the, the blade the right height. Now, going back to the plan again, and the way this is drawn is a little bit hard to see, but we have a three quarter inch thick piece of wood. This is the, the end of the apron, and that's three fourths thick from here to here. The tenon is three eighths of an inch, which leaves us three eighths. And then this is showing that the, the shoulder height is three sixteenths in a perfect world. That's assuming everything's exact. That my thickness of my wood is right on the money and the, the mortise is exactly right. But you know how life is, sometimes it's not perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the blade a little lower than three sixteenths and then we're gonna sneak up on it with some test cuts. So I'm gonna get down here at eye level and using my ruler, bring the saw blade up so it's just a little under 3 /16. So that looks close. Now I can do a test cut if I have test pieces, but my test pieces all have to be the exact same thickness as my real lumber. So I, these are my four aprons that I'm going to cut. The, You'll notice that one is wider than the other. That's my front apron because we're leaving a little extra width in that because we have to cut it apart and we'll lose some wood when we make those cuts. Um, but other than that, everything's exactly the same. I plane them at the same time so I know they're all exactly the same thickness. Um, I did not plane an extra one. That would have been a good idea. I could have used that for a test fitting. But the way I do it, um, we have a way around that. So I'm going to take one of them and do a little bit of a test on the height. The, the width I know is pretty exact because I just made that measurement with the ruler and that's a pretty direct measurement. But to measure the height is hard because the blade has a curve and you're trying to measure to the top of that curve so that's kind of tricky. So what I do is I'm going to line this up over here and if you come over here to take a look you can see that I'm going to just set it up so I'm just cutting the, like the very first blade which will give me the height of the, the board but if I'm accidentally too high I haven't totally wasted the board and cut too much away. Um, just the very, very, very end of the tenon will be a little small, and that I can live with that. So I'm going to set it up for that. So I'm going to plug my machine back in. Wake it up. Now this testing process can be time consuming. It depends on how good you get the test cut made. Um, wait, let that wake up here. Um, so be patient with this. It's easy to go too far too fast and end up with a loose fit. 32nd of an inch when it comes to joinery is a lot. If you're a 32nd off, it's either going to be way too tight or way too loose. So little steps are important. So. One cut on one side, you can see I just cut a little bit, and then I'm going to flip it over. legs to do a test fit with. And if, as you notice here that the cut is a little bit too shallow which makes the tenon too big which is what I want. So this is where I want to start. So I have a tenon that's too large and um, I can just raise that bit a little bit to make it fit. Now realize I'm cutting both sides so I'm going to raise the blade half of the error that I notice. So if I think oh gee I'm off at 32nd because this is pretty close, I want to raise that blade about a 64th of an inch because I'm going to cut a little bit off each side again. So it's very easy to go too far. So be very, very patient with yourself as you do this. And we'll see how many tries it takes me. Now I know on my saw that if I turn the hand wheel to the right, it raises the blade, right? Raises, which is probably pretty common on most saws. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get down here with it off and I'm going to take a look, I'm going to pick a spot on the blade just to watch and I'm going to turn the wheel until I see it move a little bit. Okay, so that move. So I'm going to try this cut again. Hold it down. It seems like I cut nothing, but I'm sure I cut something. One of the things that's important too is the same amount of downward pressure. Um, if you're holding it way back here, there's no guarantee that's flat on the table. So what I do is right where the miter gauge slide is, I kind of tend to push down right in that area. My hand's far enough away from the blade that it's still safe, 
but the end of the board, I'm close enough to the end of the board that I know it's tight to the table. That looks pretty good. So that's just going in there with a little bit of pressure. It's not distorting anything. And I, gee, I got it in one try. That's pretty good. All right. It may take you two or three or four or five tries. Be patient with yourself. If you go too far and all of a sudden you end up with a joint that's really loose, say, okay, I screwed up, went too far. Lower the blade enough and then pick another end and try it again. Okay. If you're only taking off that much and you only screwed up the joint on that much, that's going to be okay because that's real short compared to what our joint is really going to be. So this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a full cut. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is put it tight to the fence. And by the way, our safety rule was you never use the miter gauge and the fence together, but the exception was this application where you're not cutting all the way through. So just as a reminder, this is safe because there's no loose piece that can kick back. It's all going to be on, right? <laughs> It's, it's really not that bad at all. Now I could say, well, I'll, I'll just tweak that with a chisel later on. I can do that if I want to, but I'm going to risk it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise it just a fraction more. Now that's, we're really, really little, so I'm not going to move it much. Let's see what that does. I hardly moved it. Now it's it's snug enough so that I can kind of let go. So it's it's in there, pretty good. But it's not so tight that it's distorting the the joint to force it in there. It goes in with just extremely light pressure, and it, and it'll stay there if I let go carefully. All right. So that's what we want for a fit. So we're we're good. Now one other thing that you can think about, and um, I didn't plan ahead for this, but that's all right. Is if you put a piece of wood behind it. Sometimes as the, the blade exits the wood, you get a chip. So if you have a piece of wood that's consistent in thickness and you put it behind here, that will support the wood so you don't get a chip. And I'm gonna do that for the rest of these. Now this, I was lucky this one didn't chip, but it easily could have. So with that backer piece, um, that will keep it from chipping. The important thing is that this backer piece has got parallel faces because if it's crooked, it's gonna make your board stick crooked and then you, you won't get a square cut, okay? Um, by the way, you can also do this with a regular miter gauge. Um, again, the, the regular miter gauge looking like this. This also works. I can use this instead of this if I wanted to. But I got to make sure my miter gauge is set at 90. Right? This works the same way this is. This is just a fancier, fancy schmancy kind of a setup here. Um, we got it, so I'm using it. So, and again, we can do it at either table, table saw. All right, here we go. Easy when you do a repeated 
cuts like this, it's starting to get sloppy, so stay focused. somebody else. Let's say I'm working with another, my buddy here, George we'll call him, and George and I are working on this together. Maybe I planed my tenons down through the planer on one day and George planed his a different day. When I set mine on the planer, I put my, the planer, I set it right on the middle of the mark. Maybe when he planed it, he was a little bit above or below the mark. So maybe his wood is a hair different in thickness. So if you're the second guy, you need to make that same test cut and make sure that the setup for your friend's cut is going to be exactly the same as yours. It might not be. So the fit may need a little tweaking. So you might have to do that little edge cut on the as a test cut to just make sure that the fit is still going to be the same. Because you can, you can say, well, it, it worked for his and do mine. All of a sudden you put them in there and they just fall out because they're too loose or don't fit in at all. It could be because your wood is just a hair different in thickness. If the wood is different in thickness, it's going to show up in the thickness of the tenon. All right, so now that's the first step. Now the next step, if you look at the plan again, and I'll get the original, there's a shoulder above and below. See, there's a, a shoulder on, on the three regular ones anyway, has a, a shoulder. The tenon, the full width of the apron rather, is five inches. The tenon is four, and down here is showing you that it's got a half inch shoulder on the bottom. And if you do the math, that gives you a, a half inch shoulder on the top. So we've now got to make a shoulder tenon cutting this way, that's a half inch. This is 3 16 you know, theoretically what we did here. This one has to be a half inch. Now this one is a little less particular. Um, you still want it to be right, but we don't have to go through the, the test fitting part. It's just as long as it measures a half inch with the rule. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna kill the power, we'll unplug it real quick, and we're gonna raise the blade so that it's sticking up, instead of 3 16 it's gonna stick up a half inch. Actually, no we're not. I just remember the front apron. I'm gonna plug this back in. I almost made more work for myself. Let's look at the front apron for a second. The front apron, it's kind of hard to see because there's a lot more lines here. This is showing that front apron, but you can see where there's gonna be some cuts made to make that top and bottom rail. But the top rail, if we have a tenon as big as a half inch here, when we cut that across, it's not gonna leave us. You know, that's going to be the rail about to there. That's not going to leave us very much of a tenon to hold it together. So we want to have a bigger tenon here. So on the top, there is no shoulder at all. And on the bottom, it has a very small shoulder and it just happens to be 3 16 which is what we got it set up for right now. So I'm glad we didn't change it. So what I'm going to do is grab my big one and just make those 3 16 shoulders on the bottom. So, see, I almost made a mistake. Don't want to do that. So. I'm going to take my scrap piece out here and I'm just going to run it through just like this because it's 3 16 high, which is what that wants to be. And this is going to be my front apron. And you know what? I think I'm going to want that discolored part at the top. So I'm going to make this my bottom. So I'm going to run it through just like this. Let me turn the power back on. It has to wake up again. Okay. the saw so I can get my hands in here safely and I'm just going to eyeball this down here for a half inch height okay and here I can use a piece of scrap wood to make a test cut because thickness isn't a big issue I just want to see if my height's at a half inch so here's a piece of scrap wood that has a good edge flip this on oh plug it back in Mr. Chick. Getting ahead of myself. Can't get that. Put it back in, got the power on. All I want to see now is just a half inch high. Everything else is going to be the same. So, oh, we're a little short. Oh, we're very short. So, let me turn the power back off again. 
Oh yeah. I'm looking at the wrong line. Okay, we'll try that again. short. I'm a little picky. I'm going to make that just a whisker higher. And I can do this by eye. I'm not going to turn it off, turn off the power because I'm not sticking my fingers in there. I'm just going to tweak this up a little bit, kind of like I was doing before. Slow down, Mr. Chickle. Drop the ruler on the blade. Okay, so that looks pretty good. That's a half inch, so I'm happy with that. So now... I'm going to go ahead and cut these. same time with the same setup on the same day is the fence is exactly in the right spot. If that fence was off a little bit, let's say I, I only cut these this part of the tenon one day and it came back the next day to cut the shoulders. If the fence was off even a little bit, you'd see it because this edge would not continue straight. It would either stick out or it would cut in and leave a hole and when I put it together it, you'd see a hole there. So you got to be careful if you do have to do it on a second day that you get the fence exactly right. And if you need a hand with that, just give me a holler and I'll help you with it. Um, but now, this is a standard mortise and tenon with shoulders all the way around. And again, you have three for the sides and the back, cut this way. And your front apron has the smaller 3 16 shoulder on the bottom and no shoulder on top. And we'll, we'll talk about cutting the 45s in a groove on the next video.